2005. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's the first meeting of the Oxford Nine Committee. I actually had a question. Because now that you're a bigger committee, do we, do we have to do reorganization? Or can we I think you should elect a chair. Yeah, that's I didn't I think saying. of that. Yeah, but so sorry, I was I wondering if. I would just ask for any nominations for chair and just do it. I nominate Floor. I second it. <laughs> any further nominations? No nomination, other nominations from the floor? <laughs> floor. <laughs> all right. All those in favor of Floor D.S. Smith as being chair of the Act 49 Articles Committee, signify by saying aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you, Floor, for your service. I didn't even ask if you were willing to do it. <laughs> I just want to, I was not sure and no, I was sure good, that there was no conflict or well, any, yeah, okay. I guess I do so, well. having, uh, thank you everybody, <coughs> and um, any agenda revisions for tonight? Did you guys have a chance to look at the agenda? I know that you guys are new and we don't have any copies, right? No. I didn't bring any copies, I should have. <coughs> um, any comments or correspondence? I did talk to Chris Leopold, so if you'd like me to review that now or later. Okay, let's do it later because we actually allowed a slot for that okay. this time and do it like right after the, yep. the timeline. Uh, could, could I have a motion to approve minutes? I know some of you approved. Well, I think we emailed them. Oh, no, because we didn't know about you guys. Sorry. I have a motion to approve the minutes of uh, January 3rd, 2019, please. I think that's it. <coughs> I think they probably emailed the last group. Yeah. I didn't get that minutes either. I, actually, I haven't seen the minutes myself. Yeah, I'm not sure the minutes have come out. We're not even yeah. within five days. No, yeah, no, I know you that, did, uh, Holly. I just don't know. I don't think they oh, came I out of our Christa, office. Christa no, I sent that to everybody. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, we're getting it. I think. She just to <laughs> yeah, yeah. She no, because she, so she's, I yeah. Uh, okay. We can table that for now, and I'm going to send the minutes to one that. We'll get them. I would advise that you could approve them in a, in a meeting later date. Okay. I apologize for that. But no, I just, it just, okay. it, um, very quick meetings. I just forwarded it to everybody, so just to make sure that. You can see that. Oops. Okay, so let's move to our. So the first part of discussion for you guys that haven't been at the other meetings, we've been talking a lot about the timeline. The timeline review that I had for today is completely different after Bill's email from tonight. So I want to say I don't accept any where to start. I can help you. Um, so at about 4.40 this afternoon, we <clears throat> received information from the Agency of Education that the district organizational meetings will be postponed until February, third week, of February. 50, third week of February, somewhere around the 15th. Um, we're going to hear more later this week. I mean, they've got to get it back to us by beginning of next week to get everything posted for a meeting that week. Um, we don't really know much else except for it did say in there that any group that was trying to propose articles prior to July 1st, that they must be warned properly um, after the district organizational meeting. So we didn't get anything that said you couldn't do it. We didn't get anything that said, but it did say that the timeline of trying to have articles adopted by this week doesn't mean you couldn't do that, but they couldn't be warned until after that district meeting. Yeah. So I would tell you the pressure that I know that I've been, that we've kind of all put on ourselves. I've been the one running the timeline and schedule to say we needed something by the end of this week. It's not yeah. there anymore. Yeah. 
So I don't know if that helps and makes it any clearer, but it, it, I would say that if you wanted to have articles, uh, a warning put out by the transition board at that, during that week of February, you'd be in a March 15th or so. I haven't calendared it. Um, a so election I, I, period. I was uh, a little worried when I saw your email, so I reached out to Emily because I want to make sure that we could hold the hearing if we wanted to hold the hearing. And she said because it's a meeting, as long as it's not a meeting of uh, the transitional board, the Act 49 committee can go ahead yeah. and, and get any input if they want. So if assuming our meeting today is positive, if we still wanted to hold the hearing on Wednesday since we put it in front of which forum and everywhere we could still hold the meeting and gather input on on the amendments on the draft articles uh, and that would sort of serve the purpose that we have been worried about that we also haven't been able to reach out to the committee so instead of like totally slowing down this allows us for us to gather information that's sort of my point of view but I don't know how you guys feel about that and I don't want to call that question until we see how this meeting goes today does that make any sense yeah they can actually be in an initial public meeting yeah so that could be the yeah is, it won't be the official hearing but, right? no, it, it could, could be your could official be it could be your official you only okay. need you have to have That's one true. hearing have it doesn't mean you can't hearing. have two three four or five but it mean you have to have at least one yeah. do, we, do we have any, um, um, any confirmatory information that the deadlines that are based on uh, the state board's final order of November 30th, that all those deadlines are pushed back. We have but nothing. We have nothing that says that. Because if we don't, then we, I still think we're laboring under the 90-day deadline. Yeah. And even, you know, if, if there's going to be no organizational meeting and they have to go through the organizational meeting, um, I think we are um, not able to have a vote, or at least a if we still have to have that 90 because yeah. that won't be in 90 days. Yeah, I, I just don't know, Chris, and I think that's something that we'll get, as Emily Simmons said in her email, and then talking with, emailing back and forth with Donna Russo Savage, we'll get more on that this week. I mean, I think it's just the late-breaking okay. news of it right now, and so we could we could sit here and do a lot of if-then-what-else right now tonight, but we wouldn't have any informed decision. Okay. Do you have a comment, Rick? Yeah, I would... I would argue, I, mean, I listened to that meeting late last week when all, when we heard a lot of, I mean, the Chris's, Chris Winters, Chris, Chris uh, McVeigh, you got, there was a lot of concern about not having the time to develop these articles properly. This all, this offers an, an alternative to do that, it strikes me. I mean, I, I wouldn't be trying to force something, certainly not a last meeting, you know, by Wednesday, because you won't have articles from what I saw that you're really comfortable with. And I don't think that would be right. I mean, I would think use the time to develop these more fully. Who knows what course all of this is going to take, but yeah, this is I, an opportunity. I, I think I don't know how everybody feels. I, I do feel like, you know, any opportunity that we have to engage, and you are one of the ones that have been asking for more engagement from the public. So I think any opportunity that we have to, to reach out, this gives us the advantage to be able to actually take input and listen to it and not have to by next Friday. Good, as long as it's not a final meeting. I mean, what Bill was I, saying, this you only have to have one meeting. No, no, what no, no, said, no, what, what I said. said okay, I misunderstood it. I thought. No, no, no. this could be one of several, is what he was I said. Saying. Yeah, it could be your good. first, that's second, third, fourth, five, you want. I just have a feeling of the citizens being rather annoyed to come to a public meeting when they haven't even read them yet. I mean, I, I don't see how they can uh, read it all, and it, it's going to be hard enough to understand, but be able to have any. Um, there are some people who are well informed who will have some questions, but by and large, Joe Q. Citizen, first of all, won't be able to even download them from their computer, maybe, or have the time to. And and if we're going to have a public meeting, I'd like it to be worthwhile, mm -hmm. so, so that we could really have some discussions. But I, I'm not wanting to push it off. But as a member of the public, if I were just said. We're having a public meeting on 23 articles, but I, you won't get them until you walk in the door. I, mm -hmm. This is uncomfortable for me. So, I, you know, I, in 2.5, we were going to sort of talk about more about 
what that bullet hearing format could look like too, and by not having so much pressure on the day, this bullet hearing format could be, you know, separated into tables, and the people that are informed in their articles could sit with. The so I just want to time you out. Yeah. I've got the auditorium reserved. Doesn't mean we can't get another room. I can't promise you another room. Oh, that's true. Okay. But, but yeah, but but yeah, but let. Doesn't mean it can't yes. happen. I just want okay. you to understand. I don't know that tonight. Okay. But let's see how we feel towards the end of the meeting. Does that make sense to everybody about the hearing on Wednesday? Yep. You've been very quiet, so I'm looking at you like. No, 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 no. no. I just want to make sure that we're going to end at yeah. eight thirty and give leave enough time to have yeah. that conversation. That's all I wanted to. Say. So. Yeah, the timeline you just heard, and uh, we won't try to talk about the dates until we have more information about uh, from Emily. Uh, can we have the legal counsel update? So I forwarded you all this afternoon a letter from Chris Leopold that I said that he was going to write from the last meeting about the representative town meeting amendment. Um, he really kind of zeroed in on the legislative body of the municipality may vote an organizational resolution to adopt a model, but he felt that that was not a article of agreement committee, um, didn't represent the legislative body of the municipality. Um, and that was, and he was looking at, I was looking at Title 17, uh, 2640A, which was the basis of the representative town meeting uh, amendment. So we talked about that at the last meeting. I just yeah. wanted to let you know. Sorry, I got the letter this after, today at some point. And when I got to my email, I forwarded that to you folks. Um, did you have a chance to uh, talk to him about the other two articles? I did. I did. I yeah. talked to him about uh, uh, all the articles actually on the page. Uh, we went through from start to finish uh, on everything that was on that was in, included in the amended article. So I'm just going to start back at the beginning on the first page of the amendments. Uh, the finance piece. Uh, Chris and I really kind of went through all of the... Yes, those yes. right there. Do you sorry. Mind sharing with Vera? I don't, know. I don't have any more. I'm sorry. I should have brought more handouts. Yes. Does everybody else have what we need? If we need them, we can go quickly run to the copier. Do you have them, Brian? I have some. Um... So we looked at number five and really went into the, uh, he went into the statute over the weekend and went on the use of restricted funds. Now, Article 5 finances, according to Article 14 of the Articles of Agreement we've been handed from the draft board, cannot be amended by the electorate or by the boards. If you look at uh, page, well, I've got an old version here, sorry. The newer version, but all of Article Five cannot. Fourteen. It's, uh, it's Article Fourteen is where you have the list of what can be amended and what cannot be amended. Uh, Eleven of thirteen, I think. If you. I, that's what I have on mine. I just I'm hoping Chris, you and I are on the same yeah. version. It's on page, but it's the last last article. Mm -hmm. But you'll see under Article Fourteen A I, Article Five is all part that. So Chris and I went back and forth a little bit because we can find the words, he can find in, this, in the statute scholarship or endowments can't be changed. What we can't find is reserve funds. It's his opinion and Paul Gilley's opinion, who's a municipal mm -hmm. and school district attorney, that, it, that the funds would stay within the use that they were intended for coming in, just as I told you last meeting. But he said, I can't find anywhere in the statute where it actually says that. We can't amend Article 5, which happens to do with finance. So he and I went around this circular conversation about, well, do you add a new amendment to do this, or is that really part of the finance, which you're not allowed to amend? That was a long way of saying to all of you, we're very, Chris was very confident, I agree with Chris on this, but I mean, he's our counsel, that... You know, if you had, if someone took you to court on it, the way the the voters intended for that fund to be used for the building in which they were, I'm staying with capital funds, but any other that would stay with that building would be used. 
we can't find a way except probably having a different article and we don't know what problems that would bring up to have a new amendment that had something to do with finance we just don't know the answer to that I, so I can, just, you, can you repeat one more time what money you're talking about so we're talking about like the capital funds like we we're talking about okay. this just previously in the Berlin. Yeah. all right Chris and Paul go and, and he didn't say who else but he said you know he's talked with other school terms we all they all believe but they just can't find it where it says restricted funds coming into a new union district. There, there's other things like this in all this merger piece that's just new that says that, hey, the capital funds that Berlin put aside for the Berlin capital work here in this building need to stay with this building. They don't go get used somewhere else when the merger happens. And that's what I've been telling you, and that's been his opinion and other attorneys that he's been working with. We just can't find it in the statute that actually says reserve funds. Does that also apply to the general fund balance at each school? No, 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 not the general fund balance. Okay. We're talking about reserve fund balances. Like, Romney has a reserve fund balance for, for their reserve fund for technology that the voters set up. It's because voters have set these things up. Okay. And so when you're talking about general fund balance, that's something different that's already in the finance section and brings that together. Okay. We're trying to talk about the reserve funds that have already been set up by the electorate for a certain purpose. Where capital funds were established that way, uh, there's one or two other funds in other buildings. And I don't remember them all right now. I remember the Romney Technology one for some reason. I just remember it. Mm -hmm. You know, but those are ones that the voters, the electorate established through a vote at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes, Scott. That's a great argument. Didn't also Mr. Borders vote on the debt? I mean, I didn't vote on it. Maybe Michael did. But I wasn't eligible to vote on it. So doesn't that make it a special fund? I didn't ask that question, Scott. Yeah. And <clears throat> nice approach, though. So in, in that one, I thought we all had that, that first one. So do we have agreement that we feel comfortable not writing an amendment for that article? It, yes, Scott? Um, if I might just yes. repeat what I said before that the default Article 5, in my view, is unacceptable. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not going to cram down our throats, but that doesn't make it acceptable. Yeah. So just as long as that's understood. Yeah, and I, and I think a little bit of background of where we, where we are right now, because it's just in the committee, is that when we decided to just do, a, and I mean, anybody can correct me, but when we decided to just do uh, amend, we've been going through this process, and we decided that the easiest thing was for us to take out from where we had changed in the articles of agreement amendments that we could add new articles without changing the draft articles of agreement so that we wouldn't have to put each of the each article as you see in in article 14 each of them almost require a separate ballot not to say it so it, it was going to be incredibly confuse them and uncover them to, 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 to do that. And we didn't want to lose the ability to add some character from each of our towns. So that's sort of, am I representing that right? I'm looking like that. Yeah, so, so we want to be able to add some without changing those, uh, uh, the, all the ones that you see here on 14 that can be really amended by, by by us or could be amended if it's amended by each town and by the whole, by a majority. So it made it really uh, hard for us to be able to accomplish that and still get some articles. Is that what I mean? Yeah, so um, even though we didn't all agree on Article 5, for example, we, we had to take, get, have some compromises. So, so that is sort of where, where we're going with the with the articles that we've been discussing, is that what can we add to this to these articles that then we won't have to have that this very complicated ballot for all our voters? Sure. Is that? Uh, I, I'm just I'm just stating yes. my position on default Article Five. That that's all that I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, Article Ten A. I'm just going to keep going in order here, <coughs> Floor, if that's good for you. Sure. To, um, so we've talked about this last time that we could um, add another 
uh, member. We could add another member as long as it didn't affect 2020. It's going to be Article 10A, which Article 10, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a new voter, so it's going to have that's going to have to be improved um, at each town, I believe. I have to go back and I'm has trying to be to, approved. It has to be approved. Oh, at each town. Even if we write 2020. No, I think, I think it, for Article 10A, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. At Article 10A, because it, it's each town it. has to approve this. But 10A, I'm pretty sure. We, we talked Chris. about that in 10A, it was initial members. And I think that as long as we wrote, we remember we started with, what about if we do 2020? Yeah, right. So, okay. Okay. You know, no, it's, it's everybody, the union as a whole, as a needs whole. to approve it. Okay. Yeah, I see where that is under here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I wrote my notes wrong when I was talking with Scott, because okay. I want to check that one more time. That that's not a town by town. Well, well the town by town are in ten, uh, article. It's an article. 14 yeah. A <clears throat> Roman th number three. Yeah. I see. I see where you are. I yeah. just, I, I might have miswrote it when I was with with talking to Chris here at noon today. Uh, but that that is that is one we can do because it's past. It's not this year. It's not affecting this year. It's a year away. That it's affecting. <clears throat> um, and then we would turn that, remember we turned that to 11 members instead of nine, as it was written on the, because it would be a report of 11. As it said here, in the draft that we had in this printout, Chris had taken it from another merger he had done when he gave us that language. Wait, would, would it be 11 now? Yes, because we have 10 right, we have 10 right now, five It'll be down. 11 eventually. It'll be 11 like 10 eventually, now. 10 now, but 11 eventually. So this yeah. needs to be written, I think is 10. Because the 11 would be if that other one, that other article. This goes would be through. effective January 2020. Mm -hmm. The school director should be expanded to include one member elected at large for a total of 11 members. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're saying, you see what I'm yeah, where we're yeah, going there? Yeah. It's hard because we're using Chris's old language from a previous yeah. merger. Um, so, so we just need to change. January yeah, change the date. Yeah. Change yeah, the date. And to, to 11. Okay. And I'm keeping a. I have a running electronic copy here. So would now be the appropriate time to raise another idea about a particular article? Well, it, it related to this particular article? Yes. Okay, okay. So I, it was suggested to me about a week ago, and, and I had some time to think about it. Someone else suggested it tonight, was rather than expand by one member at large to get that odd number, um, to have three representatives from each town for a number of 15. I know we had discussed that the size of a board being 15 might be a little bit unwieldy. Um, but I do, I've heard a lot of concerns about spreading this workload <clears throat> across fewer people. And it seems like 15 might be a good idea if you wanted more eyes and more hands on deck for this. So I'd like to kind of float that idea of three representatives per town for a 15 member board rather than the at large member making it 11. We achieved the odd number, yeah. uh, but differently. I don't have a problem with that. It's fine with me. I think it, it, I was always unhappy about the fact that we were throwing away two people, 32 people, in favor of only 10. At least now we'd be up to almost half of that, of the local expertise and knowledge and thought. So I I would I would go for that. And we could um, we only really need the article an article saying that to be approved by. It'd be the same article. We would change. Oh, because yeah. you're basically okay. changing it, and then instead of having it at large, you would need to have three from each town, and you kind of have to rewrite the article. But yeah, it's not a big deal. I have no yeah. problems about that. Yes, sir. Um, it has a certain elegance to it. Uh, I wonder what it will be like for voters. I, I, and this is true of even if there are just two. The, the voting <laughs> experience for each voter to go in and have, um, yeah, have sort of a telephone book <laughs> to, um, to uh, choose from. But, but I, I, I like... Only be once, Scott. 
Pardon me? That would only be once, the initial time after that staggers. That's true. That's true. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. How does that work? Like well, the, you would have the the new board in, in its entirety would be elected on whatever date yeah. is set, but then after that the terms are staggered. So um, you would only you probably have five, <coughs> one from each town every year. So yeah. yeah, right. I understand that, but like, what's the mechanism to start that stagger? You would have someone be elected for a one year two term, three. one of three, a two of three, and a three of three. Okay. Similar to what we do right now is just that right. first election where. So the, fr the, the first election we would do that? Yeah, yes. There's okay. actually a table in yeah. Yeah. the That's default article 10A, which yeah. kind of like is supposed to lay out kind of what the... That's what two, what two it does. No, with know, yeah. with three, it's actually right. easier. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Four? Yeah. Um, right. I'm just, I'm not opposed to the idea at all. I'm just wondering um, from a the ability to promote ability to do the work if if there's information that supports I mean I think there's sort of general knowledge I think, I think we all anecdotally can say that our 32 board membership uh, full board membership is a little unwieldy to, to really do a lot of things in and so mm -hmm. I'm just curious you know want to set this board up for success and is um, is 15 uh, still a manageable number where it's not too uh, too many people to really get things done. I, I don't know. I'm just so I don't know if there's information or other um, examples of where this is, is being done where it might be uh, working effectively. But yeah. that'd just be one thing that I wanted yeah, I to agree. consider. I can't speak to the effectiveness. I can tell you where different configurations are being done, different mergers. Right now, Lamont North has the largest board of any merger, and they have 18, and that's the limit by statute. So um, there are other merge boards tend to be anywhere from 9 to 11, that area. That seems to be about the general area. Um, I foresee at least three or four standing <coughs> committees. So, Can you repeat that last statement? I, I foresee at least right now three or four standing committees to do work. Mm -hmm. Then that there will probably be two meetings a month and probably a committee meeting once a month. I think that going to three is kind of meeting halfway in the middle, where Berlin right now technically has seven, because we have two on your two board and five local. Um, I think three is kind of meeting that halfway point of 15 is still manageable to accomplish the work that needs to be done. It's spread up over five more people when you're including the, youth, the high school work as well. So I would support the three person representation from each town and then it's it's even across each town it's not like Worcester gets one and Burling gets three it's the same across everybody everybody's town any other discussion about that idea I think, yeah. I, I think coming from a, a larger a larger town going, the, the one attraction to having one that was at large it was that I felt like, you know, so even though we are all going to be represent every everybody, that I felt like that sort of spoke more to you, thirty two. So I would, you know, I I don't know if it would make sense to look at a, sort of what we were trying to do for this board. So more of a representational board. So maybe we would have a. You know, I know I come from the larger town, so some of the larger towns have, like we did for the 706B, had three members. And then this, you know, Doty and Callas would have two members, and then we would have two members at large. You know, so it would still be, but I don't know if that makes it more complicated, but sort of, it, I think that the tie gets on tie more that way. I don't know how to explain it. You know, like we were going to be that like three, 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 three people from from each from each town. It's just it's just a thought. It shouldn't matter because we are all representing everybody. But yeah. I know that in other towns, the mem the members that are elected are are large uh, have worked uh, well. But, but, but I'm not sure. since we are having everybody vote for all members, I, I just wanted to bring it up. 
Yeah, and the only way you're going to be able to keep that equal without having to go proportional, and yeah. this is still being challenged some, I know Chris, you and I have talked about it, mm -hmm. um, is having all five towns vote on the three members. You're, you're going to have to. And that's what we're doing. The, you, and otherwise, we're doing. I think you're going to proportionality. Yeah. Proportional. I, I don't think you have uh, one town, only one town voting for their representatives and mm -hmm. have an equal number of representatives for each town. So what I did, what I just wrote here is effective July, January 1st, 2020, the board of school directors shall be expanded to include five members elected from each town. No, three. Three, three. three, three members, three. sorry. Well, no, it should include we have four again? No. no, five, <laughs> five members. Three members from five towns. Yes, that's the way to say it. It's hard to edit when you're right here at the Feel table. The pressure, <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to add one more idea to the whole thing because if you think about town government, select boards, school boards, and so forth, mm -hmm. all the people who are elected to those positions are basically the farm team for all the other politics going up the line to House of Representatives, senators, statewide, nationally. And I hated to see our farm team be shrunk to 10. I think 15 will be better. I think uh, given what Bill was laying out of what the committee made up in the work, I think, I do think 10 would be tough to, mm -hmm. to manage all that. So is this for something that would go into effect July of this year or a year from now? And if a year from now, why not this year? Because then you'd have to go, you, you could, so if you did it this year, yep. whenever the warning is for the, if we don't, this is a, Chris Leopold and I had this discussion for a while. If we don't touch this year, we don't have to wait, well, we may have to wait now 30 days because of what just happened today. Mm -hmm. Previous to today, we were saying we weren't losing the town meeting election day. Okay. But, so if we didn't, lose the town meeting day, then we'd have to wait 30 days for the, um, for a petition to come back. And then from there, we'd have another 30 days of warning to get the board. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have another 30 days to get to a budget hearing. So we're going in 90 days out to where we even vote on a budget. And, and so the reason I'm, I'm but the reason is town meeting. Yeah. The reason well, mostly is town meeting. Cause well, no, it wasn't, we're wasn't just town that. meeting because yeah. we're going to, but we're going to, we may push our budget vote all the way out to July now for FY20. Okay. So, so, so just let me just finish yeah, this up. Is that um, if we have a smaller 10 person board mm -hmm. and then a, a 15 person board increasing by a third in a year, yeah. uh, the initial 10 person board is going to be making a lot of significant uh, substantive decisions. Uh, that would be better made by a larger board if we're eventually going to a larger board. So I think if at all possible, we should go to the larger board right away. So you may lose your budget ability for the next year and be at 95% of this year's budgets. Ooh. And so we'd have a lot of risks that we need to do across the schools. Okay. And is that bit just based on timing? Statute. But based on timing in terms of getting a budget? Yeah, in. yeah, we're going to be close on losing a budget this year, and I have to let any employee go if I don't give them a contract by April 15th. And the way it's a it's an employee market out there for school boards, for school for school district <laughs> positions, especially special education, for math and foreign language, you can name where you want to work. So, uh, I just wanted, to, no, 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 I, I, I wanted to try to. I wasn't sure. I think I understand the timeline. I was going to try to explain it uh, in a different way, maybe, which is if we amend 10A, if, if we were going to do that no, I need, like, on our original oh, schedule yeah. February and so see it. It. And the electors voted that out, day we'll get it. to say on July 1st this year there should be 15 board members, then um, we couldn't actually elect those board members on uh, town meeting day. Because we have to wait 30 days. There's a 30 day period after the vote for people to petition for the vote to be recalled. So then we'd have to wait those 30 days. Then we, um, you know, we'd have to warn a special election. And yeah. the one did petition? No, no. No, I'm sorry. Oh, no, okay. To even without to, to elect the board. Even without the yeah. Okay. And we'd have to probably allow a little bit of time for people to petition to, or to get their signatures in to get nominated. You know, so you're talking about the earliest you could elect a new board would be would be um, May. 
May, I think. Yeah. And then you need to warn another special meeting to, to pass the budget. So there's at least 30 days that have to transpire there. And that, that's how you're already into June before you can even have a, a budget vote. So now, I think, so that's with the original timeline. Um, and I know we're not going to if then things, but it seems likely that the original timeline is not in effect anymore. So we're even pushed back farther. Mm -hmm. It's possible that we wouldn't even be able to elect new board members you know, until June. If we, if, we amend, if we amend 10A, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if we don't amend it, it would just become effective? Yes. And it would become effective, and, we, and we'd have Article Without 5. So, so here's the thing. The district meeting would happen, let's say it's February 15th, for lack of a better day, because mm -hmm. that's in that third week. So March 15th to 20th, you'd probably have your <coughs> elections for board membership. And you could probably get to a – you could probably warn for – like a May 2nd, May 5th election on the budget. Mm -hmm. To give enough time, you need t at least 10 days in there or something to get the budget developed and adopted and presented to the voters in the morning. So but what you just said about <coughs> you have to let your folks go by April 15th, that still holds. Still holds, but it's, it gets worse as you get further down. Right. What happens is we get, we get further down and you just, it's just part of the pieces that happens. So what happens if you, so just say May comes and you haven't riffed anybody, <laughs> you, so that means We're going to be in deficit for the final year. I mean, that's a decision we're going to have to make by April 15th as a board, if we put everyone on riff without a budget. That's what happens to districts that don't have budgets. Yeah, and we'll know more once this, sort of lawsuit shakes up and you know they're able to give us more more accurate dates but what i understood today from Tony general is that we, we're, they're still trying to figure out a way that it, you know the elections could be happening in the time of day for at least for really? you know for it's, but it's hard to see how I, yeah i yeah and i you know i don't know that for 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 a fact but for because like, what I was asking is, like, you know, I was worried about the budget. I was worried about the budget and being able to elect, you know, our new members. So even if something changes, you know, those members wouldn't be elected anymore. But I know that that's not how it works. I just think that we can't. I, I don't think the, uh, you know, the election of the um, new board members could happen until that organizational meeting takes yeah. place. So that automatically puts it beyond yeah. time. Yeah. It's yeah. just, uh, again, I mean, we're sort of, it was yeah. all hypothetical, but I just, I see. Yeah. And, and for us, the, and it, the other thing is that when I was looking at this, this is from the point of view of, like, the Articles of the Agreement Committee. Like, you know, like, we, we're not the transitional in the court meeting, so I, I think our job right now is just to try to get the articles done and, you know, to be able to put them to vote whenever that time comes, but you know whether the election of the of the new board happens now or then, we would at least have these done, you know, so we wouldn't be we wouldn't continue to scramble. We're still scrambling. But so to me, it makes sense not to change it this year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But we are we all well, in agreement that it should change to fifteen. Yeah, I, have no I mean, I have no it, we were going to put in this thing about adding one. So, can we say yeah. effectively January first, twenty twenty, the board will increase yeah, by I, I, five members? Yeah, basically, I've, I've got it that way, and I'll get crystal clear on the language. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, whatever. Well, yeah, you say usually yeah. you say January twentieth, so it's ahead of the election, mm -hmm. and, but the election happens at the annual meeting. Okay. If you do it at the end, then what happens is you would be switching when people change their position. In some districts, this does happen that people lose their seats during the summertime mm -hmm. instead of at town meeting day. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm not seeing any disagreement on that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Chris didn't have any feedback on the choice. And then going to the article for input on policy and budget development. Um, and I think this is where we were last time. Um, but we said we were on top of the second page there, the highlights where it says, and we would strike all the words new. We just say the school district board shall provide timely and sufficient opportunity for local input on policy 
and budget development, structures to support and encourage public participation within the school district will be established by the school district board of school directors on or before June 30th, 2020. That's what we had talked about last. These structures may include but not be limited to the local school councils that have the have an advisory responsibility in key areas, period. And Chris agreed with that ending right there. Okay. He said then you're getting into the places that he was commenting on when you got the including other things. It's not that they can't give advice in there, it's just it's better just to stop it right at the key at key areas. And then everything so else below. All the bullets go. All the bullets yeah, go. All of them. Everything goes. All the way down. June 30th of 2018 was the date? No, June, June, tw June 30th, 2020 is what you told me the last meeting last week. Okay, so, so the only question I have, if we're going to take out the included but not limited to budget development and hiring principles, that um, I know we didn't have complete agreement on this, but we have talked about the idea about this structure shall include instead of may include. Shall include local school councils. That's up to you and how strict you want to be to the. For I'd be a little concerned that you know there may be a time when. Um, I mean, I, I'm just thinking about this, but um, it can be difficult at times at times for towns to um, find enough people to serve on a local school council. I'm always a little leery of kind of putting shall language in and for a thing that really requires people to step up and volunteer to do it. Because mm -hmm. then it, you kind of get into a gray area about like, it says we, we must do this, but we can't really do it because, you know, we don't have enough people in this town or that town to actually form a local school council. So we can do about that. Well, you can put in if one exists, shalls, listed input if one exists. Um, does that he says if town if people aren't willing to step up and volunteer, then they lose the opportunity yeah. without thwarting uh, the the others from having to step up and actually incorporating it as part of the uh, of the fabric of what we want to create. What, what this doesn't do though is, is explain the organization of a school council. Well, we we had it before, but we have taken it out. Right. So. We could put that back. Or just leave. I think what we had decided is to leave it open, so that the board could decide that the not transition, the new board could decide how better to to do the councils. We had the entire language of you know who should be elected, teacher, you know, citizen. We that, but it was a different. It was way back. Oh, okay. So if you if you want to have the Since we're shall, language, shall. Do you put shall and shall determine how that should be the structure of the school council. Mm -hmm. Leave it up to the new <coughs> board. Any other comments on that, one way or another? Would this allow <coughs> something like PTOs? Mm -hmm. Would this language permit a different type? Groups that weren't necessarily wearing a um, school council label, mm -hmm. May, would get, May would give it that flexibility. <clears throat> they would allow that. And, and I don't see this as prohibiting prohibited. Prohibited the PTO because it's not. It wouldn't be necessarily a governance tool where yeah. a school council would be a governance tool. But if somebody wanted to use a PTO adapted in that direction, oh, right. they would just have to call it by a different name, or. <coughs> it's the board that shall, right? So it, could, the structures may, we talked about shall, the, structure, the structures may or shall is what we're talking about. Right. But it's for, that directs the board, the board shall, the, the board may, from whomever, mm -hmm. PTO, anyone. I think that's why, yeah, I mean, again, that's kind of why I'm a little uncomfortable with shall because what does it mean? I mean, like, it could be a, it could be a PTO, it could be a formally constituted local council, it could be, or are we talking about any group that exists in the community that might want to call itself a local school council? 
Um, how many of them? Are we talking about one per town, or what we said? <laughs> but we've been the May, the May just stripping creates it out. a certain kind of like, um, I don't know what the word is, like a sense of um, flexibility is not quite the word I'm looking for, but um, discretion. discretion. So can I just do a, a literature and a word analysis on that? You're, you're saying shall to timely and sufficient opportunity for local input on policy and budget development. There's where your shall is. Right. Your structures to support and encourage public participation within the school district will be established by the school district board of directors on or before June 30th. Okay? I think the shall might, and Chris, you're a better linguistic than I am, and so is Scott over there, so I would take any friendly amendments to the reading of this. I'm not sure if that shall goes to the next sentence or not. I would interpret that it does. And then the may, on the third sentence, these structures may include, I think it gives, there's the f some flexibility in what they should be. Mm -hmm. so Tell me, and your interpretation might be different. Well, the limitation, I mean, if you look at it narrowly, the limitation should be, could be, we have a public hearing. Um, and all the members of the public can come. Right. And that that right. would be local input on policy and budget right. development. Right. Um, and if you wanted to connect two sentences, then I would add to the, the second one, um, to facilitate local input on policy and budget development, comma, structures to support, because that does link them yep. very clearly rather than, you know, leaving so those interpretation. Be, so let me put a comment at least yeah, in here. Yes. Then. Oh, maybe some people would do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a semi column there. I would have to say, start with a new phrase and then comment after the introductory phrase. So, can you repeat where the coma has been? So, a semi column or a comment after budget development? Um, you know, I think semicolon would connect those two clauses. Mm -hmm. I think it would yeah, too. I think, yeah, so just I hate to yeah. put in a semicolon yeah. and yeah. Yeah. lowercase development, semi semicolon structures. And that way, that would get a shell for that whole first. Yep. They have to do that whole piece. What does uh, the key areas refer to? And who is providing the response? Who's, who's the authority that's providing the responsibility or delegating? Is that the, the board the or board. is that the administration? So I just want to be clear that Chris has been really clear, Leobold has been really clear to us, is that the board can't delegate its authority away. Mm -hmm. It can take input, mm -hmm. but it can't delegate to someone else its authority. So it can't say to someone else, you tell us the budgets or the policies to adopt. They say, you can give us feedback, you can give us yes, input. We can seek mm -hmm. input, yeah. Okay, so this would be, so these, these, Councils would be providing input back to the board yeah. and key areas that just a catch all. Because we got we got into a place when there was hiring there and budget development. Who has the authority to do that? Yeah. And you can't give away that authority. So when you started to get into that list mode, you started to look at what are you giving something away that you're supposed to have authority over? And that that's in my conversation with Chris Leopold. So you know, the key area would be mostly support to to the to the school mm -hmm. to 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 each of the to each of the schools and you know sort of driven by the, you know the principal would be part in in my perfect world the principal would be part of that <coughs> and then teachers would be part of that and parents would be part of that and anybody who's you know you can develop a structure we talked about it but we decided to leave it to the to the board to decide what that should or should not look like. So that there's no conflict of the, you know, who's in charge. But basically, we're seeking input from them, and and a lot of the different districts that have, uh, that now are unified, have, uh, you know, have done local school councils, and some just said we're going to do one, and then they were faced the past few months with, you know, the what and who of, you know, what they are, you know, like there was no time to really. Which is sort of similar to what we're doing, and then we'll decide what they do. Okay. Um, next, one. next one, I want to apologize. The other night, when we were talking about uh, members to the board, 
Um, I forgot a statute that I know very well, Scott and I know it very well, which is subsection 558 that says that no board member shall be a employee of the district. So, because Scott helps me with a letter that I write every year to the secretary, so Scott can substitute. Um, so, uh, that one cannot, you can have anybody come that you'd like to come and be part of conversations. Uh, associations, in some district associations appoint teachers to be there at every meeting, to be a constant person there at every meeting, to give reports, but you can't put them on the board, even in an ex officio action. Because they're employees. So, Title 16, subsection 558A. So, Chris, I've been thinking about this one after our last meeting, and I had a couple of conversations with other teachers and other principals. And one option would be for us to just write our recommendation. It's just a reminder of how we run our meetings, too, so that we make sure, sort of similar to what Phil was saying right now, that we invite that input from the, from the teachers at our meetings. So either they're making presentations or they're giving reports that they're not necessarily, the two teachers that I talked with, with them, they felt like they would never be able to represent all, and that it would be a really hard position for them to be put on. Mm -hmm. But that they, that they love being asked for input, you know, or for, you know, but they're doing so, being included, so it's more how we, how this board will be run by whoever is running the board. Mm -hmm. um, Making sure that you know we can have uh, presentations of what's going on, or you know, seek input. I don't really know how you were envisioning. I, I just have as members of the board, you, you would have another avenue of information from folks who are actually living, living in the schools and teaching in the schools, and being very, uh, like, for yeah. the most part, I think, attuned to the conditions. Uh, that um, and it would, uh, it would be a cross pollination. Yeah. Yeah. So and I, I part love of the this board would sentiment be a, uh, of it. No, help that representative have a perspective from the board that that they probably wouldn't have if they're just coming and giving information because they leave after they get the information for the most part. If the board yeah. meeting turn late or if they don't want to come twice a month and you don't get the continuity of the same person showing up and and um, sharing. Uh, providing information, receiving information. So I think there's something that is lost there um, and, and, and creates a distance that, that shouldn't necessarily be there, I think. <coughs> yeah. I, I'm just curious, Bill, would it make a difference if the, uh, given that the employees are non-voting members? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter ex officio or not. Really? It, it, they don't have a vote. It doesn't um, matter. Doesn't matter. I asked Scott. I asked Scott. I asked. Um, I asked Chris these questions. He actually said that um, you know under state law, he said they cannot be members. He pointed me right to the statute. I read it. I'm like, oh, how did I even forget that? Um, you know, I'm sorry. I kind of joked about you and I, but we do this thing every year. Oh, yeah. Um, because of that, yeah. I do it with one other school board. But it even says you you only get it for one year unless you can prove you can't find somebody. To take the position, yeah. even volunteering for the board for the school, yeah. it's so, pretty limiting. Actually, I was well, I hadn't read it for a couple of years, and I was like, ex yeah. I was surprised at how limiting it is. So, a teacher that worked in our district could not serve as a board member. That's right. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be elected in the whole SU. Couldn't oh, serve on the Rumpy. Yeah. 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 No, but even currently, like if they worked in Callis, <coughs> lived in Middlesex, wanted to be on the Rumpy, could not. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about in this article an elected non-voting member or an appointed position? <laughs> it would be appointed by the group. It's un undetermined, not clarified, as to whether the person would individual be elected from their constituent group, whether they be a high school teacher, uh, elementary school teacher, or support staff. 
how that appointment is not spelled out here, but it would not be elected by the voters of the um, new district. At least that wasn't envisioned here. I think that, that might matter. Um, the statute refers to a legal voter in the school district shall be eligible for election. However, a member of a school board may not be regularly employed. So it talks about a member, but it's also talking about elections in this statute. So I don't, I don't know if Chris well, worked that. So Chris did, Chris, what Chris talked about is also that the composition of the board, you'd have to go back to Article 10 and rewrite that because you got the, the only group that's authorized to change the structure of the board is the electorate, not the board or not the Articles Committee, but you've got to propose something to the electorate to pass. And it had to be invited with Article 10. That was the other nuance that he gave me. <clears throat> Could the board decide to appoint every I don't know, couple of months, I don't know, or if uh, somebody appoints somebody as a uh, a board member they could appoint to appoint, do something. A, a, a point that teach, you know, sort of have a rotation. A representative. A, a rotation of there. teachers. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I don't, don't know. I'm just trying to create a, a compromise. A board. They would not have a... No. Because, well, they were still not going to be a voting member. Well, not voting yeah. member, but they would otherwise be a member of the board. They wouldn't vote, but they would be member, you know, at least as written here, would be a member of the board, which is not a voting member. So they wouldn't be able to do... Uh, make you know vote on decisions on budgets or personnel or uh, any any other issue that required a vote of the board. It was just basically uh, the goal was to have uh, members of the staff as informational uh, and, and to provide information, to bring information back, and just kind of melt the lines a little bit between board staff and information. So that we're to, just part of the mix. But it sounds like yes. you cannot do it statutorily. You can't do it statutorily. This is the. No, I meant. I'm a member. It doesn't distinguish away from the school board may not be regularly important. It's always for the best position. So maybe we could you know, have transfer members from other SUs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry. I, I just want to try to get you all this information. Um, for uh, the third one, the third one on this page, which if a competent judicial, uh, Chris said there's no need to have this. <laughs> he said it's a basic principle of court. <laughs> um, that would especially apply if the articles were approved by the voters because they would have a stronger standing than if they were just something done by the board. Um, and then for number, but he didn't say he couldn't have it, he just said, I don't see any need for it. Uh, and number four, same thing, he said he didn't see any need for it. Uh, it's unnecessary, but if you want it, you could have it, but he didn't see any need for it. And he, I mean, because he was trying to think about what do you want to put, but one of the other things Chris and I were talking about was like, what do you want to put in front of the voters? And I think that's for you to determine. Mm -hmm. so. so the next uh, item in our discussion was to review the amendments, which we just kind of did. So, so we. So, uh, we reviewed them as far as like, yes. legality and whatnot, but based on that, have we just automatically decided what we're doing in number 10, but then... Yeah, so I thought we would just go like really quickly and, if, okay. you know, I just, I, I still just see four, but I want to make sure that uh, new, art, you know, the new articles, and then there was that pending question that Chris had with we went on that one going up on Article Number Four. Mm -hmm. um, can I wait for that one sure. at the end and just uh, haven't forgot it? But, uh, so we pretty much just see that we're 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 adding the number one article that we're adding is the fifteen. We're, we'll be fifteen members as of twenty twenty. So it's, it's Article 10, we had another right. Article 10, but it's going to be a brand, you know, brand new article. Right. So it's 
So I'm calling that one one. Well, yeah, right. don't don't get in. We'll number how you want for discussion. We'll Amendment. Well, I, I just, and maybe we can make that clear right now. Just the, no. trying to figure out how this will appear mm -hmm. in the ballot. Or I don't, I think this will be a rewrite of Article mm -hmm. 10. Oh, it would be. Yep. It's going to be a rewrite of Article 10. Okay. Even if it says 2020, it doesn't. It's right. going to be a composite. It's it's affecting Article 10. Chris has been pretty clear about that, and his opinion that you're going to rewrite Article 10. Okay. If you're going to choose to do that, that's what's going to happen. So we're. Do, so. So then we have to bring just Article 10 out of the amendment because before what we were saying is like we were not putting the draft articles of agreement from the. Right, but we we'll have to take to all vote. 10 out of, so you take all 10 out of this document and you're going to put the new amended Article 10 in here on the voter, on the ballot. Okay, but, so we're going to have to put the entire 1 through 14. No, 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 just 10. Just 10. Just 10. Okay, that's just, just 10. Okay. From here yeah. <laughs> through here. So okay. all that text okay. will, be the the will be will be on, on the ballot. It will be a separate thing on the ballot. And that, that's to expand to three? That's to ex do the expansion you just talked about. Yeah. Okay. That, so three members per. Because right. yeah. you've got to show the whole it's article and how you're amending yeah. it. But it doesn't. There's a lot of repetitiveness. But I, it I, doesn't mean we have to wait for the, for 30 the days, petition. Yeah. I will ask that question about the 30-day wait, but we are, in, in touching Article 3, Article 10, you're going to have to have all of Article 10 on there. But if... I'm confused now. If I thought that by changing the date, we were trying to get away, that's we had decided that we were completely getting away from... from that's what we're trying to do. From that. I so can't... Let's, let's ask again, because that's what we were hoping, because... If that's not the case, then that are we be a affecting the date <laughs> that we're voting to? Are we affecting the being able to vote for the members of yeah, the yeah. new board? Well, I mean, that's hard to know tonight with what happened today. I'm assuming, yes, the new members are going to be somewhere else. I don't see them being on town meeting day. It's to properly warn an Australian ballot or a floor town floor district meeting coming, you need 30 days mm -hmm. and open meeting law. So that if we're going through that whole thing, then should we just say 2018, like we had it before 2019? Then you've got, you've got another piece coming oh, in. That's so extra 30 days. Okay, so yeah, remember, my opinion remember. is if, if it's going to affect that, if it requires that petition or whatever, then we make this a recommendation to the board to put out for later time. Does that make sense? Right. Well, if it's going to affect the timeline, so, have it. so that we have to have the petition. So, so he's going to go check with Chris to see if any of the amendments to Article Ten would drive that. If it does, I say we don't. We don't make that an amendment. We make it a recommendation to take up for next year. recommendation. Well, we make it up. Because the recommendation is just The recommendation is just that. It doesn't have any no power. I understand, but I think our hands are a little bit tied in the sense that, as we just said about, right? But I mean, our see, hands would be tied if it affected. It's calendar. I hate to make it seem that, make that glib, it sounded too glib as that came out of my mouth. I didn't mean it, mean it that way, but it's the laying out of the calendar. Right. To make all this happen. Okay, we should be able to talk to her tomorrow if we're going to have this. I can't guarantee that, but I will try. Okay. okay, so that was the first one, which we're still calling 10. The, the, the choice, we decided to not do anything about it, so we crossed it out for now. Right. We had written recommendation, too, in that one. Yeah. We talked about, so number two, I have the community advisory councils, which is what you have there on the end of the page. So, including the bottom 
the bottom of the page and the top? No, 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 no. just it's, that paragraph it's, that it's we the took about. It's the top of the page. So it won't be that. This is not. Yeah. This is crossed out. That's crossed out. Yeah. I'm I'm literally doing strike throughs right now as you guys are telling me what you're doing so I can get you a new document. <clears throat> In the next page, is no to the first article. All right. And then uh, we have a letter from from them again. I have done that as a recommendation to the new board, but so but it's I would, a no. I would I would I wouldn't. My personal opinion would be recommend to do this, but recommend to research it further. Yeah. I, I I don't know enough about this to say that this is what I would want personally. Yeah. Yeah, it's but, a recommendation to board of how does this work? Keep it in a live in the transition. Like, just recommend for that one, I would say I'd rather recommend research on using a representative town meeting. But, yeah. And no, then, okay. the, I'm assuming we're keeping the other two, the two last ones on that page, even though this couple said they were not necessary, but. That's where everybody had voted at the last time, and I just want to get input from Brian that Malvira is not here anymore. Brian, and P Peter was at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about those two, Brian. And the bottom two? Yeah, the bottom two. Um, yeah, I didn't have a problem. Yeah. Even though you okay with that, Matthew? Okay, yeah. so I just don't remember who else. So that's it. It's pretty, pretty minimal. So we're not putting in the choice provision. We're not putting in the the choice provision at uh, at this time. Yeah, we're gonna let the board, the new board, decide how to do it. We're gonna say that you know we. We want choice, but we're going to let them decide how to do it. Um, was this discussed the first day during or recently after our voting year? No. This, came, this, this language that came from Chris from another district and went, they did choice. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so I didn't feel like I needed to discuss it if it came from him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personally, I want to be sure that there is a policy set at the get-go because I just know that a family will say to someone, I want little Joey to go here, and before you know it, they're doing it, and then, oh, we should have a policy. I, I, we've got the, the chance to say, we want a policy written. I know that we can't put the policy in the agreements, but I think we should lean on them to that be one of their first mm -hmm. we, we have written that one also as a recommendation. I'm not saying you could, that. You, or you could, you could write one that says the, you could do something like the, new, the Board of School Directors shall develop a policy, and pro, a policy on school choice, period, or on... Um, Attendance areas or something. Or like, I have no. I don't. I'm not going to quibble change. about the the right. language. I want that to be one of the first orders of business to get that policy done. And you can put a date on it within that year. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Dorothy. I yeah. think it's something that needs to be figured out. Yeah. yeah. In so the first two years, it can't change. So we should do it right away. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. So what do we use the first three sentences? The Board of School Directors shall develop policy and programs for offering intra-district choice to families or guardians of students a role in the grades for which the Union District operates multiple business as soon as responsibly practicable following the first year. So, do you, year. so that's a positive for choice? Do you want to, to develop, and this is a question, it's not trying to direct you one way or another. Do you want, it because this is saying you're going to have something that's going to offer choice. Do you want to offer choice, or do you want the board to debate it and then develop a policy around it? Because I heard two yeah, different things as you guys all talked at the last it. meeting. Do you want choice, or do you want to have read, you know, you know, attendance areas, for lack of better words? I'm trying not to use the word towns. Right. So the, 
you know, the way this policy is written, is, mm -hmm. it seems a pretty strong indication that you can be compelled if you don't have a, a policy that, that students, if they're all part of one district, and they are, can push yep. to go to any school in that district. Yep, I and, yep. You know, it, that's why he yep. uses language right. like on, only where necessary right. for the legitimate operation. So it's kind of like a, you know, it, it really is pretty strong language, I think, to say if you don't have this, you're going to have problems. You potentially could have problems. And I think it would be in, in new entity's interest to develop a choice policy. Um, not debate one, but develop one, because it will happen one way or another, I think, uh, when you have a, a, you know, a family that wants to go to a school and you say no. Well, that's and why I think yeah, we're all saying the same thing. What I'm saying is do you, the way, you, I think you and I are reading it differently, and so that might be a problem with the language of, because I read this as very pro-choice. I, I agree with you. And I'm not saying, I heard from this table yeah. the other night, that's that, that, that that's what you wanted, that you definitely wanted choice or didn't want choice. I also saw arguments both ways, but this one's telling you you will have choice. Right. Yeah. Um, because, uh, and, and the is way that what you italicized language is because if you're not doing, right. developing a policy of choice, it will be forced on you by, uh, I think, court decisions. Um, because I think there are equal protection arguments here. I'm saying if we're all part of this one unit and everyone's paying the same tax burden, why can't this kid go to this school? Regardless yeah. of residents of what town they live in, because there are no town barriers yeah, anymore. Right. I think you would run. That's that's why I think he's so. That's why that language is italicized. I think to give it emphasis, and then he also kind of lays out, you know, some of the things you can consider in developing policy. Uh, but I, I think we we talked a lot about this in our last we meeting. We okay. didn't we didn't resolve it. That's one of the two things that did make it to the article on paper. Yeah, and I, I I feel like. At least I, I, what I heard at the end is that we wanted to have more, have that board have more information before we develop you know, a choice. Right? There, there were questions, at least for me, there were questions on, on transportation, on equity. Like I, uh, I agree that we have to develop uh, a way, and we had floated the idea of what uh, Maple Run did about having a lottery, so it's like 14 per school or whatever. Like there's ways to do it so that it's equitable, but that we were not, you know, we didn't have the information that we needed right now to be able to, then we but, do we, do, but do we need information or do we need to dictate to the board that they need to come up with a policy? We can say to the board, so I was, you know, reading those three, and it's not until those said that they very strong for choice. I was, we can say that they should develop a policy. Come on, shall. It does, it says shall. Okay, good. Rather than should. I yeah, mean, just because should. That's what I didn't. I read that. I know. You Sorry. did, but you said just said should. I was just making sure I it's going to be shall. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I, can I ask but this is, this is saying shall. that the, the decision of the board is basically made. That you will we're have making, choice. We're making it for them. Yeah. yeah. There will be school choice. Right. Um, so okay. yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm. I'm not, I don't know. We this group sitting here knows that that's the best. I can't find well, I'm not even sure where it came from. Because yeah. if this is a separate article, they'll vote it up for that. Th oh, he's saying oh. the attorney. Oh. Yeah, the, 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 all that the word Smith, some of the sections, to make it legal <laughs> under the law. How, how would it be written if we, if we say we want them to have a policy on choice, the policy can be there won't be choice, can't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, if you want to write that it, it, it would be a uh, child developed policy program offering what's an offering interest? I want to get rid of the word offering out of there. No, because this this is affirmative. This isn't. I, I, I understand. You know, that, I understand. I agree with what it's yeah. saying, yeah. Chris. What I'm saying is, and, and and my bias is, I'm not for school choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I am not for it. I don't believe that it helps kids, and that it, and I believe that it hurts kids. What, but so that's my bias that I'm putting in front of this. And I'm saying so. I'm worried about the word offering that this is telling us we have to offer school choice. Somebody in the audience. Oh. Sorry. I would argue that it does help kids in some ways. I met personally a few kids over the years 
in Palace that would have probably, that were having trouble in our school and probably would have done better in an environment had choice been an option. And two, you know, in that I look, I think about the contingency of, of a school closure. And first, you know, slapping a community on the, in the face by closing a school and then not even giving, you know, a choice of the school that they would want their kid to attend. You know, that might, you know, that I think wouldn't be very palatable to me. And I don't think it would be palatable to voters. And I think there's a lot to consider with that. In a way, by giving school choice too, it, it offers some little bit of flexibility to parent people who might come into a community that's either, you know, got a small school, or it's less affluent, but you know their property values might be lower, so they can actually afford to be there. They can actually have their kids in school that they would choose to have them there. So there are a lot of ramifications there. That some of them turn into economic and social, it can help the less well-off communities a little bit. So I would argue, I would argue you know, we should think a little bit about that bigger picture. Right. So let me, re can I, re I'm sorry, can I restate what I said because I didn't say it clearly. Yeah. The reason I said that I'm biased for school choice is that the research has shown that you produce a more of an equity gap mm -hmm. with school choice, that those who have means will take a use advantage of the choice and will actually make the education outcomes for those who do not have means, especially transportation and access, and have less quality of education. And that's what their research has shown on meta-analysis studies in school districts. But, but if the policy that the board made... Can you hold, hold just one second? No, that okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I, wanted, I wanted to ask Bill to... To explain okay. why, uh, yeah, what he just explained. Okay. So, so it, it, uh, the board could make on their policy something to do with transportation that it would not limit kids who wouldn't have their own transportation, which would be expensive. But I think I think my issue is that now we're sitting here trying to write a policy. Right. Yeah. Yep. We're saying, well, so it has to include transportation so that we don't. I, uh, we're saying we, it can't. It can't worsen equity and equity issues. And we're basically this group is not going to write the policy. Okay. Right. Choice. So Another group is. So we need a one liner. And so we can't. I mean, it, the, the, the sort of more ornaments we hang on yeah. the, this this policy, the more we tie their hands to answer these very questions that we're just now brainstorming, um, but are integral to. Should we just say the Board of School Directors shall develop policy of school choice or lottery? What if we use the language that is here? Um, take out well, offering. It addresses transportation too. And then, and then add on, um, and take out the as soon as reasonably practical goal following the first year of operation. And I would propose substituting um, uh, after buildings for operation in the 2000. 21-2022 school year and thereafter, because that creates a two-year window um, during which, according to the other articles, everything is basically status quo. So it's a two-year period of time to develop policies so that it becomes operational in that third year. Okay, so we're, we're keeping the first part of the sentence, and we take after, so develop policy and then Scratch programs for offering interest. No, no, I would do, okay, read. The school board of directors shall develop policy and programs for interest district choice to families or guardians of students enrolled in grades for which the union district operates multiple buildings um, um, to become operational in the 2021 um, 2022 school year and thereafter. So just to go four is still implying positive. What do we can we put regarding instead of board, you know, regarding the school and then it doesn't give a that doesn't give a preference. Right. Well it ultimately well if enough voters don't want school choice, they'll vote down the article. <laughs> sure. You know, and that's so this mm -hmm. really is a poor presentation to the voters. And if they don't want it they Okay. Holly, did you get a little bit? 
I think I got it too, Holly, in my notes. <coughs> it was actually very helpful to have Chris read it and talk about it at the mm -hmm. same time. It's helpful to have you read it and oh. type it at the same time. So then we're adding one more to read, and I should have five new articles. So basically, you're say, I just want to say, Chris, that in your opinion, putting this article on the ballot for the special election, which will occur whenever, is basically going to be a referendum on school choice. Uh, the voters can vote it down. It, it will be a ref essentially be a referendum, um, but I don't think that would be the end of the end of the question from a legal perspective. But as a policy policy perspective, voters would say oh, we don't we don't want to have school choice. They could have, they could do that. Does it mean the board couldn't support the policy in school choice? I think. Yeah, and I think, you know, for people like me, it would be hard to vote in this article without knowing the details. <laughs> but, like, if you're in the fence a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, but if the, if the voters voted down, the, the board would still be able to, would still have the discretion mm -hmm. to develop policy on school choice. But if right. the voters voted in, the board would not have the discretion to, would have to, to not, not have it. To not yeah, offer school choice. Right. Yeah. I think right. that Chris, what do you think? <laughs> Looking to the other lawyer. I'm waiting for the wrap-up and discussion about whether we should be putting these in front of the voters anyway. You have all the articles mm -hmm. talked about it on the floor side. Okay. No, I just want to review. <laughs> Sorry. Trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I was like, I didn't mean to remind him, but no, it's okay. <laughs> supposed to make him forget. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you go? Do you have all the. So, what I count is five articles here. Five articles, and we're about to open Pandora's box, and we don't yeah. have enough yeah. time. But, Chris, you have the floor. Here's my thing. What? Um, um, I would propose that we change Article 4B on school closing after 2000, for, for the 2021 2022 school year and after. Um, and rather than having as the uh, electric of the majority of the electric of the two union districts, that we have it uh, by a super majority um, of the electric at 65% of the vote. Somebody else comment on how I feel about it. Brian, any comment? Sorry, put you in the spot. I'm going to go around the table because. I'm still, uh, so, it is to regarding Article 4 of the um, closure of the school that right now this is one that requires a vote of the entire school district, not of each individual town, correct? Right. Yeah. And so you're proposing that 65% of the entire electorate. Right, to close the school. Um, if the board proposes closing the school, the entire electorate has to, the super majority has to agree. Can I ask you a question? Because the way you yeah, said sure. it could be different than what I think you could have intended. Okay. Did you say 65% of the electorate or 65% of the voters, of the, of the voters. voters in that election? People would vote. So that's different because sixty-five percent of the sixty-five percent of the voting of the vote of the vote of the cast votes of the cast votes because if you said sixty-five percent of the electorate would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both are big, but that would be really big. <clears throat> um, what's uh, why sixty sixty-five? Why was that chosen? Uh, just two thirds, basically. Because it's a serious decision. Yeah. No, no, I mean like. Yeah, not, I mean, why specifically that that number is super majority? It's two thirds, is that? Uh, two thirds would be, well, it's close to two thirds. Um, but I didn't really have that in mind. It's just, I'm getting close to the age of 65 and talking about that. Fuck <laughs> 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 that. Uh, no, I mean, just because, it's, not because it's a serious thing to be doing in, in terms of not only for the school, but the community that it's involved in. And we're not, um, you know, it, it takes, 
doesn't give veto power to an individual town where the school may be located, uh, but it still requires a lot of support from the electorate as a whole in order to close the school, and I think that, that it's worthy of that, rather than a simple majority. You know, I'm just curious if 65 was based on, you know, yeah. other... History. Yeah, history, or it, was, it sounds like it was just sounding good. Mm -hmm. sound good. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Hold on a minute, Scott had his hand up first. Well, speaking to that, um, I could feel, I could, well, could you consider taking the last sentence of Article 4, Paragraph A, cutting and pasting that to be the last sentence of Paragraph B, so that it's the voters of the town affected even after the first two years <coughs> that would have to vote affirmatively. The voters... The, the, there's so many more issues that affect that town when you take when you close that school. To to all the other towns, it's kind of a budget issue. To the town affected, it's ten times more than that. And there may be good reasons to close the school. There are plenty of instances of towns voting to close their schools around Vermont. But it's it's so so much more important to the people that live there. Um, than to the district as a whole. To the district as a whole, the criteria would be economic. And the town would lose, uh, Callus would lose. If it were up to the town of Callus, it might be a different outcome, and everybody might be better off for it. I'll yeah, go to that to Rick. Yeah, I would want to be on the record. Is I agree with Scott completely. I think, you know, if that was a four-fifths majority, it would still be unfair because essentially four of those towns that are not impacted by that closure could mandate that closure while that town that is impacted by it has no voice, essentially. And that, and I, that is wrong by any measure I know, you know, because it really does, as Scott said, this has ramifications for those communities that go far and beyond, you know, just even the schools. And it certainly has ramifications for those kids that are now being sent to other communities. And so we, t I, I mean, I think we should stop using this equity word and start using selective equity, because I think that's kind of what's happening when we, make, when we allow decisions like this. I, I was looking while you guys were talking uh, for A, but I can't find So for for B, it's in the ones that we can amend. For A, mm -hmm. I thought it was in the. For A, you cannot. But we cannot, but I no. can't find it listed. That's in. It's in. What do you just do? Bold. Bold. Bold on the. In 14. Oh, I'm sorry. A. No, I was reading it wrong. Yeah. Oh, I say, you mean, uh, Scott, you were referring to the last mm -hmm. sentence of the first paragraph, first paragraph of, of A. 14A, you didn't bring that the down to B. A. That's yeah. why I understood Scott. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what Scott Passage saying. Passage. Yeah. But yeah. you're saying bring it down to B. To B, yes. yeah. You're right, right. That's why I took what Scott yeah. Passage yeah. said. Yeah, so the change would, there would be right. one change before to B, and it would be that the approval must be by the residing, voters residing in the towns in which the school is located. Yep. Would that be along with a majority of the other towns? No. Just the, the, the town itself could, the town would vote, would would vote, vote to close a school, even no matter what the other towns yep. say? They don't have a say. They're not saying anything in that particular case. Yeah, I'm in just that wondering. Unique yeah. special case. The yeah. board can propose that, right? The full board from all the towns could propose it, but they would. I see what Scott's saying. Yeah, just because to um, if uh, it does affect other towns mm -hmm. if the kids from the school that so let's say a, a callus were to vote to close its school, mm -hmm. 
um, the other towns would have to take the callous kids. So it would, um, I mean, it's not, it's not the There'd kind of four. scenario that one would expect. There'd be four kids to parcel out to move over to this that, that, That's the only reason for closing it. <laughs> well, I think right? that, Yeah, I'm just, I'm just sort of, the full board of their half the commerce, the commerce of that is, let's say, Worcester, yeah. uh, at some point, for some reason, has uh, 15 school kids um, and just refuses, voters refuse to close the, the Doty school. Uh, but we're all now in a shared uh, tax and uh, operational structure. Um, so all the costs that are involved in operating a school fully for those kids would be borne by all five towns. Mm -hmm. And the four that are not Worcester would have no say over whether you know, that's the, most, the best way for education to be provided um, across all five towns or not. Um, well, again, we've seen this happen in places around Vermont, and it, it doesn't last forever. When, if there are 15 kids in Doty and it goes on for three years, probably the voters in Doty are going to realize that that's just not tenable anymore. Well, in, in that situation with one unit, um, the economic cost is not borne only by Doty, it's borne by everyone. Um, it may, but I think, at, at, you know, educationally, it may not be a great thing, but I think that's what Matthew is trying to get at, is that yeah. there's a... Uh, you know, and it, it wouldn't be as small. What I'm asking you to do is to balance that strictly economic question against the whole panoply of questions that are involved for Callis, Worcester, when you close our school. Mm -hmm. There are jobs. <coughs> There's real estate. No, 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 There's no. people moving out. Mm -hmm. My son came to visit at Christmas. He heard, oh, they're going to close the Callis school. He said, oh, that's another reason not to move back to Vermont. There are a lot of reasons that affect just that town. That's I ask you please to recognize that yeah. truth. I, I, I would support um, Scott's suggestion. I, I think the, in, in the context of um, the town itself has to vote affirmatively to close the school. I, but I would just add, mm -hmm. and the other towns have to vote just a majority as a as an additional. Um, so what happens if they vote no, and then there's a 65 percent supermajority? If they vote yes. no, then it it doesn't it doesn't close. There there will be I mean just to speak to Matthew's scenario, um, <clears throat> I, if there were 15 kids at Callis, say, um, it is part of a of a combined system. So I would, I would expect that the organization that perhaps, you know, the, the principal oversight would be done out of East Montpelier, for example, there would be um, adjustments made in order to run, run that, um, that disposition as, you know, as well as can be, because they will always be looking out <clears throat> for the welfare of the children. And um, they're, you know, they were just, it's not, it's a completely, we have to think of it in a completely different way from how we've been accustomed to thinking about our schools. Because I, I, it won't need the entire, you know, um, panoply of, of administration and, and backup like that. It will be part of a, of a larger system. And can potentially be sustained in a very different way and structured in a very different way. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you know, to, just to kind of tack on to what you were saying about what the best interest for the child is, at, at some point we've got to understand, or we, we've, there's a detriment to the child at when the class size gets to a certain point too, right? And so we're looking to Bill and the leadership team kind of help us with those kind of understanding that those scenarios and 
when the child, ch children are being affected by class size. And, um, so, and I'm not for closing any schools, I'm not saying that, but um, when you get to a point where quite a few of the, the voters may be not having the children in the district, so it's, but they don't want to close the school for somewhat emotional reasons, and I completely understand that. But so that would, you know, potentially have an effect on these children that don't have the numbers in the classes that um, support the education needs of those kids. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, it's I, a balancing act, and I don't know how to do it. I guess. Yeah, I, it it sort of comes back to the entire point that um, uh, citizen oversight of professional. Um, activity, and uh, I think you know the voters giving giving the voters of a town who's um, uh, and and this is especially important because it's the smaller towns that are most likely to have their schools closed. Giving uh, having that be uh, a determining factor, I think, is is a crucial protection. Yeah, I think because I just, of what you have said. Go ahead. Oh, I just, I, I honestly believe that the people of Callis or the people of Worcester, actually the people of any small town in Vermont, really knows when it's time to close their school. They're not going to wait till there's only 15. They, they will say, you know, folks, we can't do this anymore. This isn't fair to th these kids or to whatever. And they'll say, we need to get together and find a solution. And it quite likely will be to close the school. But they still will have some, hopefully, some control over maybe where the students get sent from that school. Um, I think there have been schools uh, within the last 10, 20 years, time flies when you're my age, um, that have closed, and they've made the decision on their own. They haven't been driven into it by uh, some kind of merger or the state, or they've said, we don't have enough students and we are going to close. I think it would be done. I think Callis is smart enough, and I think Worcester is. So considering you know, where we are in time, I'm gonna allow two more comments and just make one clarification that I think you know both, both sides are making the same argument, and in sort of not balancing them out, there's an assumption that this board won't have the best interest of those small towns either. So, yeah, Matthew? Yeah, I mean, this is the conversation we've been having for three and a half years, mm -hmm. literally, this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, and I don't think, you know, we're not going to be persuading people tonight to change their minds or think differently about it is 8.45, and, you know, uh, we're at the end of the meeting, not the beginning of one, so I, mean, I, I think we could schedule a meeting to really just come to grips with this particular topic. It's the one we've been, you know, we even said when we, when the original, when the, the previous committee uh, did deadlock on a previous kind of iteration of, of suggestions mm -hmm. that came up around this, and we said at the time, this really is the, the core thing that mm -hmm. we, you know, we really want to come to grips with uh, for the article, so... It would make sense to me to schedule another meeting. It really is just to decide this topic. Um, but that then leads naturally into the question of the hearing that's happening on Wednesday, uh, which, if it's all right, I could just say one or two things about that, if that's okay. I don't want to. Rick, 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 do you have a comment on this? And can you be very brief? Sorry. I'm going to say this briefly as I can, but I'm going to say it. This talk has been about bringing equity across this whole region. And what this does is puts an inordinate amount of pain on certain communities, and usually the weaker communities, the smaller communities. You know, okay, if you've got, I'm not going to, I got 15 kid per student number. Yeah, I would, I would tend to agree with that dot that with those communities are probably going to close at that point. They realize that. That's kind of common sense. But the reality is, why not pull? some kids from the surrounding schools. Take a little of that pain to the communities that aren't 
subject to that. It's real easy to sit there and say, you know, this has to happen. When you're not sitting, you're not at risk of having a school closure in your community. So, okay, maybe your kids should be, those school numbers drop. Perhaps they should come to our school for a while. You know, that's, that's a good way to kind of equalize that pain a little bit. And it actually improves our flexibility. Yeah, it might cost us a little more. But in the end, you know, we've got more flexibility because these numbers do rise and go. And in spite of what this trend show right now, we've got half a floor that's ready to go underwater. We've got most of the East Coast. 80% of the U.S. population is in flood areas. So my guess is sooner or later they're going to figure out the is the only place high and dry. They're probably going to be running here. So, you know, that, not, I may jest in that, but, you know, that's a reality that we face today. We can't predict that. No. But there is real equity. There's an equity issue, and I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't think the townspeople are going to take that really well in any form. But having the ability themselves to make that choice. Michael. For at some point, I'd like to just make a procedural uh, comment, but this might not be the proper time to do it. But before they meeting end. Well, we, could you kind of speak up because I'm we've got a... Oh, the, yeah. 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 I just wanted to make a procedural comment before the meeting ends. Okay. Whatever the appropriate time is. To do we, we were going to get right now into uh, trying to decide on the meeting on, on, on Wednesday and, you know, what that public hearing format would be, whether we have it or not. So if, if that would affect that timing, please make your comment now. Um, well, well it, it may it may be related to it. Um, and I, maybe I should wait for Bill to come back to Because he's the one who's executing it. Mm -hmm. You just pulled the plug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I'm speaking up. Bill, I, I asked to make a procedural comment. Yeah, I heard you say that. Thanks. Um, and, and it's this. Uh, the, the, the transitional board yeah. cannot meet until after there's an organization meeting. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And that's been put off until February 15th. Yes. Uh, there's also potentially very likely to be a court hearing around that time as well, based on the agreement that was filed today. In the meantime, I think that it behooves us all to be very accurate with the information that's being put out. And there was a recent publication on Front Porch Forum today in East Montpelier and there was something also in our local East Montpelier signpost newsletter mm -hmm. that comes out that says, um, and, and this was before this deadline, but it's not related to it, this, this, this meeting that was scheduled for the 14th, um, that the new board will be elected on town meeting. Now, now that's been changed, potentially. But whether or not the board, the new board will be elected Ha has not been decided. And the transitional board cannot warn that meeting, and that, that might have been the perfect time to do it on town meeting day. But the electorate may decide that the new board is going to be elected by Australian ballot, or not by Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. And there's a possibility that the electorate, will, the electorate will decide to not have that new board elected by Australian ballot. And the transitional board, which hasn't been seated yet, cannot decide when that election is going to be until they're seated. So to be putting out information that says there, there will be an election, that has not been decided. And, and the folks that are concerned about governance and authority get concerned when that kind of information is put out there. And I mentioned this at the last U32 school board meeting, that statements were being made that the, that the new board members will be elected on town meeting day. Well, I, and, and I that apologize. Has, and that has not been decided. I, I was the one that put both the signpost and the front porch forum. What we were trying to do with, the, you know, Edie wants everything a month ahead because the signpost, but we were trying to have as much information in front of the public because usually from you, we, we you know, we don't give the public enough time. So I posted for that. And then we got this email today at 440 after I had posted last night of what was happening on Wednesday and posting what we had posted in the signpost, because what we posted in the signpost was already not accurate because we had to change all the dates 
after the same post went into publication. So, you know, we're doing our best to stay on top. The whole point of it is to provide information, we, uh, at least for myself, because I was the one that put that out. It was like, you know, as, as a school board member, I'm just trying to comply with the law and stay on top of what we're supposed to be doing. And in the end of that post, I don't know if you read to the very end, I, I, I changed what it said from the sign post. They said, that's a pending lawsuit that might change the timeline. I, didn't know any of this by this afternoon. So it's it's just yeah. we're doing the best we can I, I, I to like you, stay on top of I it. I don't want to get into a debate with you. You're missing my point. T to be saying in public information yeah. that something will happen rather than may happen. May happen. Okay. It's likely to happen. It's proposed. I mean, it may be the best thing to have people elected on town meeting by Australian ballot. But that decision has not been made and cannot be made. Yeah. So when you're giving information to people, people are going to read that and go, oh, we're going to have an election on whatever date it happens to be. That may not be true. Okay. And, and so you need to be very, I'm just saying, but you need to be very it, careful it, because when people, clear. you know, I happen to have the time to study the articles of agreement. A lot of people don't. People are going to read that information and think, oh, there's going to be an election, you know, by Australian ballot, and, and there may not be. The, the other point was I was reading something that was put out about how, maybe anyone can clarify this for me, that existing school board members are going to be re-elected at town meeting, and I, I just didn't see that in the article. It's not in the or in Act 49. It's not, Michael, it's not. Could you maybe clarify I can clarify that? it. it that is not in the articles. It's not in Act 49, it's not in Act 46. It's part of the responsibilities of the current school board because they have operational authority till June 30th, and we need to keep the boards constituted through then all the way to December 31st. Okay. And so I've been putting that information out that there will be. We actually, tonight, the Berlin board adopted an amended uh, warning for their elections here in Berlin. And they all need to, those elections need to run in every town. I put out a video about that last Friday. I want to actually say that since you, you were at the U32 meeting, everything yes. that I've done has said recommended or proposed or draft okay. schedule. You were right about that. Yeah. I just want to say for Floor and others, we're all trying to get out the information. I take your point 100% about who has the governance authority. Mm -hmm. Please give us the benefit of the doubt. We're trying to do the best we're doing. I, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I understand people are trying to do the best they can. Okay. Thank you. I, I, Honestly, believe that. So, it, thank you. It, saying that at the end was very reassuring. Matthew. Yeah, um, so, I, yeah, I did want to discuss the, the hearing on Wednesday. Um, I'd actually like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. I just would feel better about sure. that, doing it that way. So, I'd, I'd like to, and I, the committee can vote it down if they want. I just want to make the motion so it's a decision. But so I want to move that we postpone the public hearing scheduled for January 9th uh, to a date to be determined between January 28th and February 8th. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. So, may I speak to the motion? Sure. Um, so I, I share some of the concern that Dorothy expressed earlier. Mm -hmm. I, feel like, I feel like I'm encouraged actually by the fact that this committee is slowly but surely actually, you know, sort of reaching some, some clarity mm -hmm. on a lot of the motions amendments right that we discussed tonight. Um, but you know there's still stuff that we're seeking legal advice okay. about. Um, we, we haven't been able to publish or get out, you know, what this committee has discussed to the public in a meaningful way. Yep. Um, I would say there's a major issue uh, that I would almost guarantee would come up at a public hearing, this school closure issue and what we mm -hmm. want to propose about that that we haven't even really been able to come to grips with. Yep. Um, and so you know, I just feel like we, and, and we might actually, even among members of the committee, might end up again <laughs> stating positions and talking about, you know. But I'd rather, I, I just think it would be much better, and we've been, we've been sort of given the advantage of yeah. time here. Um, I also feel like, you know, the, the pace of work for the, this committee has been uh, very challenging. Um, I would say that, and, 
my observation, for Bill, it's been punishing. Um, and he has not said that to me, but I, that's my observation. So an opportunity to give him a breather and a little bit of space, um, you know, seems like uh, you know a good thing to do at the least. So that's the reason why I made the motion. Any more discussion? Or? I, I might just add to that. Yeah. Um, that, uh, again, uh, taking off from what you were saying, Dorothy, before, the, um, if we were to try to have a public hearing on Wednesday, it would look a lot like us telling the public <laughs> what we're going to do, as opposed to seeking, um, seeking the advice of the public to ourselves. And sometimes that kind of public engagement can be um, I think I've heard you say this before, Bill, um, that kind of um, you know, appearance of dictating rather than listening can be worse than not having public engagement. Or it's actually been proven it's worse than yeah. having no public engagement. Yeah. So. You know, I, I, because we do not know, um, my concern is that if we don't have the hearing, we lose uh, the time. Um, if we're assured um, that the new deadlines are bumped out for everything. Yeah, and we're not, we don't have that assurance. Then we're going to lose the opportunity to actually have a vote on articles within the 90-day time frame from the date of the um, state board final plan, which was November 30th. Um, this this stay, this additional time, um, I don't believe is across the board. Um, basically, saying to the state board, you know, we're extending all your time deadlines by a certain amount of time. You know, it's more of a scheduling issue for the attorneys to give each other time to respond to uh, the pending motion for a stay at the, at the Superior Court. So I think if we do not have the public hearing, um, we will probably not be able to have the vote on the articles within the time frame set forth by the state, by, by the articles, 90 days um, within, uh, within 90 days of the uh, State Board's final order. So I'm not going to say that I know this, Chris, but let me just read you that paragraph about articles. Sure. That was in the email. Mm -hmm. If your transition board or initial board wishes to propose amendments to the default articles of agreement that, if approved by the voters, would take effect prior to July 1st, 2019, including amendments initially drafted by the amended amendment committee, then they should be warned after the organizational meeting pursuant to VSA 16 VSA 706N. Okay. What was the 90-day... So the 90 day, that's, the, I don't hear anything against 90 day. I don't hear, but the 706N, because I did go look at that, is the way in which union districts propose bylaws, which is you have your organizational meeting and then you vote the bylaws. So, so we're looking at Article 14B1, um, again, sub one, which says, after the state board issues the statewide plan, district subject to merger to have 90 days to form a committee with members appointed right. in the same manner and number as required for a study committee under section under 16 VSA chapter 11, which is what we are now, uh, and shall draft articles of agreement for the new district. During this period, uh, the committee shall hold at least one public meeting to consider and take comments on the draft of the articles of agreement. Sub two, if the committee's articles are not approved within 90 day within the 90 day period, then the provisions of the State Board's default articles included in uh, the statewide plan shall apply to the new district. And so my concern is the 90 days um, period is, is starts from the November 30th. Yeah, I agree with and what you're reading. I just you know, don't, I, I don't, I don't have think the any, it. this legal filing does not extend that deadline. Is it possible to get a waiver? But what, I, what I'm hearing is that we can't have uh, the vote on the articles of we can't warn the vote for the articles of agreement until we have an organizational meeting. Yeah. So then we just maybe add so a according which means, to this, which means that the vote on the articles can't possibly take place within the ninety day window. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. we exactly. can't warn it until after and February fifteenth, which means it can't take place until at least March fifteenth. Yeah. Um, so well, that's beyond the ninety day window. Like it's yeah. just. So then we can't even propose. Oh, no, well, what I understood from Emma Jay is that we, we can talk <coughs> about articles, we can seek public input, but that doesn't mean that that is our 
it sounds like hearing but from, from the email it sounds from that email like they like there's intent to to let extend you the, extend yeah. the deadlines yeah but i i don't know that for sure i'm just saying that's how i read the email yeah. Yeah. No, that that makes sense to me i i know you're you're an attorney, Chris. You, well, you know just, that you've seen this stuff. Doesn't yeah. have one size doesn't fit all all the time. Yeah. 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 Especially if it's just a you're extending your own deadlines. Yeah. We're fine. So considering the time of nine, should we call the question with the assumption that we can vote on articles of agreement at a later a, uh, that we can have a hearing later and it'll be okay voting? Well, That's sort of my understanding from reading this email too, or we can just vote knowing that we're taking our chances. How much how much advance notice for this hearing do we need to give? Is there, there it's, it's, already, it's already a notice. It's already warranted. It's already warranted. It's already right, warranted. but if we change it, like if we move it out, the original the original ninety day deadline is in effect. We would have to warn the article vote. By, the vote, by, but I, I was talking about the hear, a hearing, a public hearing. Uh, so well, if we can wait for the vote to cancel the meeting tomorrow. Actually, the Wednesday. other thing is that the, I don't think the hearing, does the hearing have to take place before the one? Is that I don't think so. I think just you yeah. have to have a public hearing just probably before the yeah, I don't think the law. At this point at night, I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to make any good judgment on any of these technicalities. <laughs> so, I guess Sorry, so but I'm just going to say this. I mean, I know what, I think there's a little bit of faith leap here. Mm -hmm. I've used that term before, and I think, you know, if you want to put in privacy, you know, you, the way you said it, floor, I think you were trying to say, you know, well, we're going to assume this or that. I think you vote which way you want to go. Okay. And, you know, if we have to scramble and get a hearing next week, we can. I think either way we're scrambling. I personally, my opinion, I agree with Dorothy. Wait. Get some information out. But that's, that's me. You can reject that. That's fine. I get that. So my one question, the public hearing, it only needs the 24 hour. I'm not saying that's the best idea. Yeah. But so if we did Any find out in the next day or two that it is required prior to, we could pull in from the suggested date that Matthew mentioned and do it sooner, but still give us time to do some of the clear. Yeah, we could still do one next week. I mean, we're right? going to have I mean, other that's days all that are going to open up. To get out of it is that we can't I support canceling Wednesday. Yeah, I don't yeah, think we're yeah. ready for it. But it doesn't mean we have to go all the way up to the twenty eighth of January. We could pull it in if we needed to based on the dates. Does that make sense? Based on when we're finished. You know, I, I still have based this, on when we're finished. Right. As, as we as as I don't have the certainty that we're not gonna miss in any days. Um, because the uh, Well and that's why I guess if he clarifies that the next day we then Reworn and redo and the most important thing is to be able to put the warning for the vote. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had given ourselves that day between January ninth and January nineteenth. We, we know that that's but so you that's this moved. so let me go back to this about where the authority lies. Mm -hmm. This group has the authority to approve amending articles. You do not have the authority to, to warn. warn. The transition board has a war ability to warn. They don't sit until February 15th. <laughs> okay. So at least. should be okay. At least. Right. Well, that's what we know today. Right. Yeah. That's what we know today. I'm not right. going to say at least. I'm just going to say that's what I know today. Yep. That's so why I say that a lot these days. So can we just can we call the question? Any? I will call the question. Okay. All those in favor of Matthew's motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Any abstain? The ayes have it. So, uh, just one last thing for organizational purposes. So if we're not having this meeting on Wednesday, we have a meeting scheduled for Friday okay. morning at 8.15, mm -hmm. is what we have yep. said. It, with, I, I'm not trying to push it. I do want to give Bill a break. I also do not want to lose momentum in getting stuff back from uh, Leopold because I can get so, stuff back from Chris. I was just going to ask, when do you want to meet next? So, is there anybody that can do that Friday morning that we have already scheduled and just get our brains together? I have to be back home by noon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think it, is, 
Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we had scheduled an hour. So, okay, I didn't know how yeah. long it was going to be. Yeah, isn't that what you said? You couldn't do more than an hour and a half, so we had said. <laughs> a good thing to say, yeah. Yes, so, I said that. <laughs> so, what are we going to do with the closure then? You're going to do what? What are we going to do with the closure? Yeah, and we can, you know, we can add stuff to the agenda, and I, you just can email me if you have any uh, things that you want to see in that agenda, and I'll send the amendments cleaned up now. Yes. I would just like to recommend that we just suggest that we budget time for this Article 4 conversation, because we could easily spend an hour just talking about that and nothing yes. else. Yes, I, I cannot, uh, not trying to sell selfish. I don't think you're going to get much done Friday at morning for where this committee's at. Now, I think you should set a schedule for when you want to meet. I agree with you, Floor, that dropping and going too long is not a good thing. But I, And you don't necessarily need to do it tonight, but you need to do it probably by tomorrow through calendaring and doodle polls and electronic means and things like that. But I think you're going to need, you shouldn't have shorter than two hours, and you probably shouldn't have longer than two hours. Because as I watch this committee after two hours, we all turn into... Chill. Jello, thank you. Okay, so I think you you know there we can do things like that, but I mean I know we <coughs> want to try to put this together and keep it going. And um, the the amendments we're going to have typed up by tomorrow morning. Get those out in one new form. So do do people have two hours on Friday? No. No. Okay. I have every. All the time there is. <laughs> and I would also like to try and figure out the answer to Article 10, too. If she were yeah, no, those were impossible. <laughs> <laughs> those <laughs> answers. Yeah. Okay, so so then we'll we'll send a doodle poll out in uh, trying to get some dates. It's just my experience with doodle poll is that it's really, really hard, especially with some people, to try to get uh, a specific date. So with what? just asking with morning or after work is best for all. So I have a quick we have question though. Yeah. Is, besides Article Four, is there anything else besides just kind of cleanup work on reviewing the revisions? Yeah, that's all. So I guess what I'm wondering is that would do we feel like we need that much time to do what seems to be a third draft review of some of these things we've been working on. Just can we, even if it's just taking in bites at it, just get some of this off our plate so we can have a dedicated focus on probably the most sensitive and important component of articles. Yeah. I would least offer that up, even if it's just an hour to... Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think if we have a meeting scheduled for Friday, everybody could come so far. If we could at least get an hour done of work and maybe just concentrate on the on the amendments that we already did mm -hmm. and that would be cleaned up and we save article five for for four for when we have the, the, we send a doodle poll for having a, a longer meeting for for that one or, or and be sure to have everybody there. And be doodle. sure to have everybody there. But at least we don't Well I'm gonna suggest you take the money we're not going to have an organizational meeting. Mm -hmm. I just got a yeah. commitment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, wait. I literally did today. My son asked me if I'd babysit. Well, he goes to Long Island. Sorry. <laughs> Bring, the Bring the kids. Bring the kids. Bring the kids. <laughs> no, that's a long way from Dumberston. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Matt, well, didn't, well, well, didn't you I, want I to have a meeting a for idea. choice? We'll, a separate we'll meeting altogether? Together? Separate meeting for choice? Mm -hmm. No. No? No. No, no. Okay. Just closure. No. Just closure. Yeah. Article 4. I couldn't tell if you were being sarcastic or not. <laughs> 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 All right, so we'll get you what we can for Friday. Yes. On the articles, but closure. So, yeah, I couldn't quite thank, tell. Thank you. So, so we can I just say, at the, at the end of that, would we have the discussion about whether or not we should even be putting these articles in front of the voters, given Sounds where good. we are? Okay. So we We'll adjourn at. You mean that, oh, so just... Okay. I'm not going to get into that tonight. Because, sorry. sorry. I just want to understand, because yeah. we don't have to put them in, unless they're one of the ones that you've stated. No, no, what he's saying is that if we are not prepared enough and we don't feel like these are worth putting out to the voters... Okay. Gotcha. Just... Might not... 
Yeah. But we're going to adjourn at 9.10. I apologize for really keeping it long. And we are at meeting Friday at 8.15? Yes. Thank you for coming and sharing this review. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.